Hey guys, welcome back to the Alice Chalmers Show. So over the past couple weeks, I got the block all cleaned up, prepped, ready to go. So today we're going to start putting parts back into it. And we're going to start by checking the protrusions and the bits of the cylinders. Okay, so it's been a week since I shot earlier footage on checking the cylinder sleeves on this engine, and they're sitting up too much by a lot. If we go to my notes, the lowest we're at is seven and a half thousandths, highest is ten. Specs call out two to four. Obviously, that's too much. And I don't think we're going to get any smush on that because I did have that cylinder compressor on the cylinder while I was checking those stats. So, I did some more digging. I put my step mic on this half and measured to the other side of the crack. And we're up between five and eight thousandths. So if you subtract five to eight, that puts us in and around the neighborhood of where we want to be because this crack's going all the way through, I suspect that it's also pushing up on our counter bore and making the cylinders too high. So the problem I see here is if I just go and put the head gasket on the block, I don't know if the cylinders are going to get pushed all the way down by the head and the head gasket and seal it off. And if it doesn't seal it off, that gives us problem because we have coolant passages all over the deck bigger problem here is too is where the deck is pushing up on the cylinders the most is the farthest point away from any of the head bolts. For example here it's unlike the head of my D2 where we get a good head bolt right in the middle of the deck. Now obviously there's a lot less force on this head and no room to put those head studs or head bolts there. And if this was cracked, they'd possibly do more harm than good. So we're gonna do some experiments today. And we're gonna see if we can get that step flatter before we put the cylinders in. Okay, so we're over here at my little mini shop press. I've got the black in the press. I've got this steel beam running over to the edge, kind of to the edges of the head, um, just to try and prevent from pushing too hard down on it. And I'm going to see if I can just squish that five thou out of it. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to work or not, because it's very possible as soon as I release the press, it's just going to spring back up. Um, however, there's also the possibility that it got pulled up when I pulled the sleeves out. I'm not really not sure what it is, so... Let's find out together. I can still feel steps. So I'm gonna go no. D2. 
did not change. Alright. Let's try something else. Alright, similar setup now, but I'm only going to push on the side that's heaved up. I got a lathe tool bit in there, just a, a blank of steel, and we're going to kind of lever it down. Alright, so it's doing exactly what I thought it would uh, the, the first thing I said. Uh, when I push down on this, it goes down, and it's now below this side. But as soon as um, you can feel my pick getting caught on it, but not this way. But as soon as I release the pressure might even have been able to see it. Now my pick gets caught going this way, not this way. Now, using the press, we're obviously putting a lot of pressure on this. So we're gonna have to go to plan D or E, whatever we're on now. All right, so I had one more trick up my sleeve. Not even really a trick, but I just went and I checked for flatness across this. And other than these three points where the cracks are, it's pretty flat. So I'm going to put the cylinders in and we're going to see what happens. Worst comes to worst, we got to tear it down again. Well, we'll call it a learning experience. But as you can see, uh, just from running a flat file over it, other than those points, I kind of avoided hitting them with the file, but uh, she's pretty flat still. Um, material around the threaded holes for the head bolts wasn't really pulling or anything. Had a little bit of a high spot around where the water pump mounts, but that was about it. So we're going to go ahead and start putting the cylinders in, and we're going to hope for the best. All right, it's sleeve time. So, we have a cylinder, we have a package of O-rings, we're going to put one O-ring in each groove. There is no seal at the top like there is on some other engines, uh, just the pressure of the head and the, the head gasket are what seals it at the top. That's why the cracks aren't as big of a deal. So. All four cylinders are the same kind of deal. We're going to take our O-rings and some Vaseline. Move them up a little bit. Vaseline is slippery. And I just take this pick. I'm going to try not to roll the O ring, but just move it straight on down. And it rolled on me a little there. And snuck into the first groove. So I'll move it on down to the second groove. Just like that. These are pretty thin O-rings, so they shouldn't give you too much trouble getting on. Not like, uh, keep mentioning some other engines, but they can be kind of a bear on in some other larger tractor engines. Well, you just want to slip them on, then. I'll run the pick around a couple times, try to get any, make sure it's not rolled around or anything. And then you'll just do that for all four cylinders. And we're ready to go with the block. 
kind of nice out today. Geese are out having a good time. Lada hasn't found them yet though. She's honking on the other side of the building. So when I dry fit these, I put a mark on it and that mark was to the cam side. And it's going to remain on the cam side. It shouldn't matter. But that's how I measured them, so that's how they're going back in. I'm just going to take a paper towel, give the bores one last cleaning. I'm going to make sure there is no garbage on that counter bore, especially given the issues we've been having with getting them to sit down. Wipe as much dirt as you can off of them. And if you got small hands like me, they'll slide right in. Very tight fit. pusher on that all right so if they're gonna be difficult like this one more often than not they are I uh, just got two lathe tool bits under there with some brass underneath them because the, the lathe tool bits are probably about as hard as the cylinder and uh, it's just a little too hard to do by hand because that went in nice and smooth so there we go. Perfect. Alright, this next piece we're going to put on is the peccock for draining the coolant out of the upper portion of the block. From the factory, they usually didn't put any tape on here. You can put some on if you like, but I don't think we're going to need it. So to install this, we're just going to take the thumb wheel out. And then we'll thread the body into the block. Get it good and tight so that tapered pipe thread will seat. And this is the thumb wheel portion, it just has a hole in the end. That allows the fluid to come out through the hollow outer portion, and that just threads right in. Alright, so this next step's not necessary, but it's something I do. helps me sleep at night. We've got the cylinders in there. We've got the peck cock in there. Everything on the lower portion is sealed up. We still have the opening for the water pump, which would be the lowest portion at this point, but that means we can put some coolant in here and see if those O-rings have any major leaks in them. 
So I just take a funnel, put in one of those coolant passages. I've got some of the coolant here. And we'll just fill her up, not all the way. This machine only holds, I think it was eight quarts, so. Fill her up about till we get to the water pump passage. And then I'll just let it sit like this overnight. And if there's no drips on the floor in the morning, we can drain it back out. And we're good to continue on. All right, guys, that about does it for this part of the uh, Ellis Chalmers C engine rebuild. I hope this video comes together, because like I said, I shot it over two days that were spaced apart fairly good because of my work schedule. So hopefully once I edit it, it's all cohesive. So like I said, I'm going to let this sit overnight. Tomorrow I'm going to come out and check for any leaks. If there's no leaks, so we're going to move on to uh, starting to work on the crankshaft. So always, guys, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more of what we do around here, hit subscribe and like, and we'll see you in the next one.